Season 3 World Championship live from Los Angeles, California. We're just minutes away from the match between Gaming Gear and the Lemon Dogs. But first, I'd like to welcome SKT's top laner, Impact. Welcome to the interview lounge and congratulations on that victory. A rematch versus TSM. Some interesting picks and bans. Talk me through them. Uh, 환영하고요. Uh, TSM 경기랑 경기에서 좀그 팩겐밴이 되게 재밌었는데 거기에 대해서 좀 말씀해 주세요. 어 일단 리븐이랑 잭스가 어 잭스가 나왔는데 그게 다 제드 제드 카운터로 뽑았고요. 어 그리고 또 재밌는 게 애니가 나 애니가 나온 게좀 이렇게 했는데 어그 약간 어픽 좋았던 것 같아요. 저는 그 어, 바꾸겠다. 아 어, 그렇게 됐어요. <웃음> We picked the Riven and uh, Jax as counter to Zed, and uh, any pick was uh, surprising to us. And um, I had uh, something more to say, but uh, my God, I don't remember. <laughs> no worries, it's all good. Just coming off a great victory. Tell me then again uh, about your lane matchup versus Dyrus. You gave him a hard time. Was it Jax versus Karthus matchup? How did that go? 그 잭스랑 카서스랑 그 매첩이 됐었는데 그 다리오스 선수랑 붙으셨잖아요. 그게 어떻게 됐는지 좀 말씀해 주세요. 어 일단 카서스 탑일 줄에 생각도 못 했고요. 어 제드 탑이라 생각했는데 좀 아쉬웠고 다, 카서스 탑을 와가지고 좀 당황을 했긴 했는데 그래도 다이러스 그 아, 가, 다이러스 선수가 좀 침착하지 못해가지고 그 일렙 때 원래 좀 사르셔야 되는데 좀 공격적으로 해가지고 킬을 따인 게 진짜 큰것 같아요. 그거 어, 카스 픽은 좋았는데 좀 아쉬웠어요. 그게 플레이가. Uh, I didn't expect uh, Carthus to come to the top lane, so uh, that pick was really surprising. Uh, I was caught off guard. And uh, Darius uh, played well, but uh, he was a bit too aggressive in level one, so he pushed far, and uh, that was a little uh, disappointing for me. But uh, yeah, uh, was uh, well played. Well played by Darius. Um, now, a victory for you guys, and you've got some more matches coming up. Almost certainly being qualified for the playoff, but I'd like to focus on the game versus OMG tomorrow, as that's a rematch you lost the first time around. How do you think it will go this time around? Uh, 내일 경기 그 OMG랑 제 경기를 하시는데요. 이번에 다시 붙을 때 어, 무슨 생각을 갖고 경기에 임하실 생각이신지요? 일단 저희한테 롤드컵 처음 와가지고 패배를 준 아, 패배를 안겨준 팀이고. 그만큼 강력한 팀이라고 생각하고 있고 어, OMG를 이겨야지 한 번이라도 이겨야지 그나마 강 팀이라고 생각을 할수 있을 것 같아요. 꼭 꺾어야 할 팀인 것 같아요. Uh, OMG was the the team that gave us our first defeat when we came to the World Championship. So I believe they're a very strong team, and uh, I think uh, we must, in order to call ourselves a strong team, we must must beat OMG. Talking about being a strong team, coming into the tournament, as you said, suffered some losses. And how do you feel that you've grown? Do you feel that you're on championship form right now? This World Championship, when you came out, you were a very strong winner of the tournament. You were a very strong winner of the tournament. You were a very strong winner of the tournament. You were a very strong winner of the tournament. You were a very strong winner of the tournament. I think I'm not a very strong winner of the tournament. 솔직히 제가 그 1일 찰때 구토를 하고 그러긴 했는데 그건 다제 잘못이라고 생각하고요. 컨디션 조절을 못한 어 점점 회복되고 아, 회복은 되고 있는 것 같습니다. Uh, I, I think we are slowly regaining our form. Uh, the first day uh, I was sick and but uh, I mean I think that's my fault for not being able to uh, manage myself and uh, I think my forms are uh, recovering slowly and uh, our forms are uh, you know growing. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Congratulations once again. Now let's send it over to the caster desk for more group stage action. Thank you very much, Shox. And we have made a caster lane swap here in the League of Legends studio. Joshua Jetliesman and I will be bringing you the final two games of the day, starting with the rematch between the international wildcard Lithuania's Gaming Gear EU and Europe's Lemon Dogs. And unfortunately for these two teams right now, they are just playing for pride with their hopes of the quarterfinal berth officially extinguished. Yeah, it's tough times for these guys because Lemon Dogs have to be very disappointed about their performance here at Worlds. I know personally, and a lot of other people, expected them to play second or at least very competitively in this group. But just like Gaming Gear, you know, this is their first time at Worlds. And I think the stage and the pressure and the quality of the teams really caught them off guard. Right. You know, they're both young squads. 
they will be able to take this into their experience in the future. So they should still continue playing here. They got plenty of group stage left. There is a difference in prize money as well later throughout the tournament. And yep. the pride is immense. There's still the world watching. All right, let's get these guys on the rift. Let's check out the starting lineups. On the blue side, it's Gaming Gear EU. NBS in that top lane, Elunir in the jungle, Mazarin in mid, Deadly Brother on AD, and then Spyro looking into your soul on support. And on the red side, it is <laughs> Lemon Dogs with Zero Zero in the top lane, Dexter in the jungle, Nuke Duck, of course, in mid lane, Tabs on AD, and Mithy on support. And it's it clearly said that the obviously mid lane Mazarin has been huge for his mm -hmm. team coming up in all these games was for the wild card tournament his Gragas play really he was able to put them on his back there and just carry them through and we've seen Nuke Duck just Back and forth, it's been a roller coaster for him, but he's always bringing out some of those plays that we like to watch. Yeah, and I think for both of these teams, this is going to be a chance for them to kind of shine again. Lemon yeah. Dogs has already picked up the one victory over Gaming Gear in their first matchup. So Gaming Gear, this is their chance to kind of get the win on the board. Yep. We know that them coming in from the International Wildcard Tournament, a win for them now since they both these teams have been officially eliminated. The win for Gaming Gear especially would be so, so important for them. And we see some of the Lemon Dogs guys backstage as well for them and they were extremely disappointed when they found out that they were right. eliminated from the quarterfinals but they're still here to play i mean even coming in before the tournament lemon dogs is always looking towards the future they are such a young team so many 17 year olds on that squad they were the number one seed in the regular season for the summer split of the european lcs so they know they have plenty of potential moving yep. forward and they're just still looking to win and we'll see what they can do as they hop into this game. It was a long road for pretty much every team coming into this. It was kind of like, hey, you know, now we have this chance. We can qualify for Worlds, and we get here. And then you, you don't see the gap between the skill, but you see what different styles that people play. And yeah. that, that itself creates the gap. It's not that people are far behind in skill set. It's the execution of what they're doing, how, how fast the rotations are. So it's crazy to see, you know, what was having a long extended run in the EU scene is, you know, not as strong here because of what's happened around the world. Yeah, the speed of the game so far in this World Championship has definitely kind of surpassed Lemon Dogs and Gaming Gear both. Mm -hmm. Gaming Gear in the International Wildcard Tournament was a team that would kind of withstand the laning phase and then right. come in and win team fights. And Lemon Dogs, likewise, was one of the most conservative slow play teams in the European LCS with excessively strong laning phases, which is why I'm kind of excited for this matchup because they have somewhat similar styles and it will be an opportunity for them to kind of not get outpaced and kind of play their game. And the bands coming out here are already showing a little bit of a little bit of flavor. The Aatrox band, which had previously mainly only been a European pick, it's a rather European affair yep. right here, and they're actually <laughs> letting Zed through, which has been a pattern today. I really wonder if we're going to see the Riven counter pick. They're at least tooling with it. It's 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 funny how, uh, I guess, influential or impressionable, as Doublelift said, that players Everyone are. Here is, exactly, yeah. right? We see the Kogma. The Riven obviously isn't getting picked, but. You know, people weighing in on things. They see that that works now, so it may be thought to be picked up by somebody else because everything's getting banned out here and it's going to have to be that spice, that variety that well, wins it. The Ribbons worked all right in lane so right. far, but I can't actually say that Faker's played incredibly in either of those this Ribbon games. This is true. He was dying a few times, and the picks and bans in this game are kind of crazy when we consider the overall scope of this World Championship. The fact that Zed, Ari, Corky, and Shen have all been getting <laughs> through already. I know that Zed and Shen combined were already 100% pick or ban. Zed has been banned in the majority of the games, but they're really just kind of trading power picks with each other. I like at this it. Point. This is like super comfort coming in for these yeah. guys. We'll have to see what Nuke Duck puts in for himself. It looks like everybody's getting their own choice here for Lemon Dogs He's gonna, on their side. Mm. We'll have to see what he decides. Right now, we got tabs on your screen. Diana Looking. is good against Ari. Yeah. It's something that we haven't seen that much of recently yep. since Diana's kind of fallen off. But back back when Diana was big, it was extremely successful. And it would also combo very well if they wanted to do any type of dive buddy or, you know, dive party. Because they'd have Shen, Vi, and Diana if they wanted to go in and potentially kill Deadly Brothers Corky. These are, these are going to be very telling next few picks for Lemon Dogs. Because even with the Vi, you're generally expecting... A assassin, an assassin type mid laner from Nuke Duck, and considering that Fizz uh, was banned away, and that Zed and Ari are already on gaming gear, Diana is kind of the one that he would have left if they decide to get it with their last pick. All up to Deadly Brother and Spiro, and Spyro now rather. 
We do have that AD carry on the board, so we're looking for support. We're looking for Jungle coming out of Gaming Gear. At least they can still play with the Teemo play. At least they can. Yeah, they can. Yeah. Teemo plays. We will have to see what they decide to go with. Yeah, like you said, they have an immense amount of high priority picks, which makes me think that everybody is going to be trying to get kills in their lanes, the solo lanes. Even if the duo lanes are going up against each other, it's going to be quite deadly. And those are my favorite duo lanes, the ones that will tell you we'd rather match up 2v2 because we want to fight. Yeah, those are the power duo lanes, the ones that want to just push extremely <laughs> quickly. But with the Sona ban... Play in the crowd. With the Sona ban, they're incapable of doing the Sona Corky lane that has had so much success so far in the World Championships. I like the fact here that Gaming Gear is going with a double assassin. It's a very similar look that Fnatic had yesterday when they were able to beat Samsung Galaxy Ozone, except Fnatic had Cassidy in the mid lane and a Zed in the top lane. They should still right. be able, Gaming Gear should still be able to do similar flank strategies here. Two can play that game, <laughs> says Mithy. I can pick Teemo as well. See? Two Teemos. You guys will have fun with this one. But really, to finish the point on yep. the double assassin, Gaming Gear is going to be looking to flank these fights, which means if Lemon Dogs has strong enough straight up initiation, they're going to be able to bypass that and not allow the assassins flanking time. 20 seconds left on the clock. They're deciding Ooh. here. Nuke Duck could play the Zyra, but that's not going to happen. It's going to be the Cassidy in mid lane. Looks like he mm -hmm. will run teleport on that as well. Something we see from Europe a, a bit more than really any other reach. Yeah, the Cassidy is definitely a favorite of Xpeke, who Fnatic is first place currently on the other group. And we thought it was going to be an assassin for Nuke Duck in the mid lane, basically to combo with Vi. The level 6 gank right. from Vi plus an assassin in mid lane is generally just instantaneous destruction of the enemy mid laner. It was either that or Diana, and they decided to go with Cassidy, which I think is a much more versatile pick overall for Lemon Dogs. Yeah. And knowing that Gaming Gear is a team that doesn't necessarily have crazy aggression in the early game laning phase, I think it's a better pick overall for Lemon Dogs. And you got Zoro. Where is he? going on Shen. So he's really, yep. actually, as they, you know, you hear Krepo say, he's the one that kind of roam whenever he wants to, but now that mm -hmm. he's on Shen, maybe he'll be stuck in the top lane on the island. We'll have to see what they can fare for each other. He is going to be up against, again, that Zed picked along with another AP carry, which is Ari this time. Yeah. So we'll have to see. I want to see that those... matchup, actually. Zoro Zero versus Zed in the top lane, just the ninja lore battle in a sense. But also because if Zoro Zero can't do his standard push up the lane and fall back, Supremacy in that lane is going to have actually a large impact on the mid lane as well, where, since it's an early game casted, and Nuke Duck is going to need a lot of help. Well, Nuke Duck usually gets a lot of help from Dexter, though. Almost always. Almost always. A bit of an extension of that mm -hmm. mid lane. So as the teams are headed onto the Rift, let's quickly, quickly check out how the fans voted. According to lolesports.com, 92% of you think that Lemon Dogs will win their second match mm. here at Worlds, and the analysts pick Lemon Dogs as well. Whenever it gets over 90%, it's always a little daunting to look at that list because the, having only the single digits on one team's vote means it's a very low percentage. And this ups Lemon Dog's percentage of being voted to win. That is true, actually. Yeah. And in the past, when Lemon Dog's has been getting voted to win, as most teams that are underestimated all the time, as soon it's, it's this phenomenon I've witnessed across like all sports. As soon as an underdog team or a team that no one believes in gets believed in, they almost instantly disappoint. It's the strangest thing. <laughs> You need to earn it over time. It Put can't too much happen. faith in them, and it just puts too much weight on them overall. We'll have to see what these teams have for each other. In the beginning of our fourth game of the day, Lemon Dogs versus Gaming Gear EU going out. Just wards to start, no fighting, and really nobody has even seen each other just yet with Lemon Dogs looking to squeeze into the top part of that jungle soon. We've seen a surprising amount of level one shenanigans so far in the World Championship. Stop spamming that recall, it's noisy. The rest of Lemon Dogs is going to probably try to move in here. NBS is doing the human scout right now, while the rest of Gaming Gear is kind of scattered amongst their red side. This, to me, actually shows that Gaming Gear is highly disorganized right now at level one, whereas Lemon Dogs is actually executing a strategy here. As they, do. they do have five strong going in, which means they're pretty much going to hold this spot Well, they decide to go back and get something out of this. They have to choose that within the next few minutes here. They do pick down the pink, and that's going to be all they really wanted. Yep. That means as well, since MBS saw them going in, Gaming Gear, what is their game here right now? Because they're, see, Gaming Gear is undermanned in the first invade, so they are, they're blind right now as well. Since they don't have pink wards down, they have no idea if they got spotted coming in here. And they also have no idea whether Lemon Dogs went back to base or not. This is an extremely dangerous blue buff right now for Gaming Gear, as yeah, 
The rest of Lemon Dog is just pushing him back. This could very well set a Lunar really far back in the jungle. They're probably going to fight over this. And this is going to be hard for him. It, it appears like they're going to put their solo lanes on the outside. Unless we see Zed and MBS going towards that mid lane. Right now they're all kind of huddling together so they can get the aggression on this. But there's a bit of time being wasted here. Part of me really wants him to just fight right now. <laughs> because it's four on four. They're clearly wanting to fight over this blue buff. No one is getting lane experience. Well, this, is, this is the dance. So right, right now, now, right now, this is going to force the smite. This is pretty much Game Gear's getting out of this. It's a but... smite race at this point. Lemon Dogs can't clear the ward <laughs> oh that is God. in their blue buff right now. That is one healthy golem. How long are they going to do this for, Riff? Uh, quite a bit of time. Oh, there's one. Dosido. -do. One of the small ones is down. Mazarin's okay. quite low. We can see Zoro went hard in that top mm -hmm. lane. Hey guys, how we doing? Coming in on three minutes on the clock. Those standards, the reason why lawn darts are illegal. Oh, a little bit of damage here. Nuke Duck from the bottom lane, but he's got eyes on floating over his head. So they're going to be going in on this one. That blue buff is highly coveted and grabbed away by Dexter, it seems. Mazarin in the top oh, lane. No. One last key strike, and it goes to Zoro. How does something like that happen, Riv? Because that's a level two Shen, not known for his crazy level two oh, that, kill a level potential. two all in. Yeah, that's what Shen does. <laughs> he had the uh, Doran shield. That is the aggressive item right there. But really, absolutely. Lemon Dogs was able to get the smite away after an extremely extended mm -hmm. stair fest at the blue buff right there. That basically gives Lemon Dogs an incredible start. I feel like what actually happened in the top lane, Mazarin, since he is kind of the leader Ooh. of gaming gear, may have been spending too much attention worrying about what was happening on the other side of the map and not dealing with his own business. And that's why Zero Zero was able to kind of Wondering kill him and surprise him. Wondering if he needed to be present. Him. Exactly. He was just thinking too much and probably trying to make calls halfway across the map. All right, so Alan here, now knowing he has the ward on him, Lemon Dogs placing this chess piece oh, no. very far ahead, minutes ahead right now. It looks like they'll be able to clean this one up. No, the red buff stops ticking. And it looks like they won't get the slow, but they are going to still aggress. They have gone with the 1-2-1 one, one on the split. Those solo laners in the long lanes. Let's we'll see if the duos here can get this one back. Looks like they are able to grab. No, Dexter. Dexter ran off with it. So he gets everything. Smited it away because Alunir was out of the business and Dexter had waited long enough from the first blue buff they took to get the steal. It's actually quite rare nowadays that we see a team able to take both blue buffs in the early game. They're also able to get the timer on that blue buff. So they know around nine minutes and 25 seconds or so that blue buff is going to be up again. And I would actually kind of expect a reinvade because at that point, Zoro Zero will actually have his stand united as well. So they're going to be able to have that extra skirmish presence throughout the map. And we just saw Tabs hitting level two in mid lane there. Level two at five minutes in, which just shows goes to show the chaotic movement that has already happened in this game. With those AD carry supports middle, it looks like Gaming Gear is going to be pressuring up Mazarin. Definitely not running any armor, and you can see the giant health bars there sitting in his HP spot. So he can only take a few shots. Zoro definitely has the 1v1 in this lane. Yeah, I wonder what Zoro Zero is going to be rushing here. Probably a Spirit Visage. It is a little strange here how Gaming Gear has decided to go quirky Lulu in the mid lane. And here comes oh, a gang from Dexter. Dear, oh, dear, that's not good. Deadly Brother trying to get out. He may be just that, but it looks like they focus on Inspiro now. And they're able to get out of this one alive. Oh, no, he gets the condemn. He walks straight for the turret. Tabs Ooh. gets the hit up. The Q as well. They trade off on that one. That exhaust from Inspiro was incredibly timely. It seemed like Deadly Brother was completely dead to rights. And then it kind of baited Tabs to go a little bit too far. Inspiro stuck around after the exhaust because he was honestly a little out of position as yeah. he was running away. Allowed him to get killed against the turret, but then obviously a lunar because that fight was so long, had enough time to close in, pick up a kill back. Well, it looks like they don't really like what's been happening. Mazarin says there needs to be a change of plans here. I'm going mm -hmm. mid, you guys are going to the top lane. So Deadly Brother and Spyro going to start heading up in this face off against Soro Zero. I don't think he's going to have too much trouble in that lane. He's already accrued 34 to the 26 CS of the matchup they had before, so he's just got to hold steady. Yeah, Nazarin was not going to do much against Zero Zero, especially with that health crystal kind of tipping off that Zero Zero was soon going to become even more of a pain for Mazarin's Ari. And also, if you're playing Ari, you need to be in the mid lane so you have the ability to roam around the map and make some plays. That's. 
as sure as Zoro Zero feels about himself, engaging in a 2v1 and really not taking too much damage. Dexter now towards the bottom lane, a level 6 NBS here. Does have that escape for himself, but he may try to just poke in Alunir on the side. Dexter sees him, and they go back to safety. Dexter needs to hit level 6 to have a bigger impact on this game. He's actually shut down a Lunar quite substantially, but a Lunar's Jarvan got something back when they were able to pick up that kill. We very well may have something here. No, they're going to back away yep. in the side lanes. But this game, actually, Riv, is incredibly close. Um, coming into the game, Gaming Gear has yet to pick up a win, but surprisingly, Lemon Dogs has only had one win in the entire World Championship. And despite the early advantages that Lemon Dogs was able to take with Zoro 0 1v1ing Mazarin mm -hmm. in the top lane and with Dexter winning the Smite War at his own blue buff, Gaming Gear is really hanging in there and if we look at the way gaming gear won games during the international wildcard tournament it was actually by sticking around right sometimes even losing the laning phase slightly and then making plays in team fights so by those accounts gaming gear is actually on track in this game it's not that they they know to stop it right away but they do know how to just kind of clog up what's happening what's going wrong with this lane switch that's kind of how they stalled out the kills going on they got kind of recontrol of their jungle that was being swiped out by dexter so we'll have to see if Lemon Dogs can continue the pressure. NBS still holding on to that red pot in the bottom lane a little bit for the aggression, a little bit also to save his butt if he gets into mm -hmm. a bad situation. But we also have new, uh, Nuke Duck now going back to the mid lane versus Mazer. Yeah, I'm very interested to see how that mid lane actually plays out, knowing that Nuke Duck and Dexter are both level six. We already saw one attempted approach where Dexter camped right behind that top left mm -hmm. wall in the mid lane and he actually didn't Vault Breaker into range to land Assault and Battery onto Mazarin. Mazarin didn't even have to burn Ari's Spirit Rush to escape. That is oh. effectively the guaranteed gank for Lemon Dogs, and it means Mazarin has to play like extremely scared. Yes. There's a word for that, but it is not, <laughs> it is not a friendly place to be in. We can see him returning to lane. Right now we have Alanir backing in the jungle. Not too much. Not That's not coordination. But you can see that Gaming Gear is setting themselves up. They're not exactly in the position to start making these impact plays just yet. The wards in the favor of Lemon Dogs towards Dragon and their side of the jungle. You can see the aggression here from the bottom lane. Lemon Dogs not having any problem keeping this lane pushed. No, and there's that gank in the mid lane we talked about. Ooh, Mazarin is holding down to the ult. He's making sure he gets out. They're trying to get some damage in as well. Good offense is also a good defense. Hey, when that gank doesn't work in mid lane, that's fantastic you, you for punish. Gaming Gear, once yeah. again. Dexter's big ultimate is down. The big thing here, though, is they're trying to get a little bit back, knowing Ooh. they've taken Mazarin so low. They're trying to steal that blue buff away. It's another smite war if they get to that. A Lunar does not have as much backup. Zed is coming in, though. He is always invited to a party he doesn't want to be in right now. The blue buff also going very low. Again, taken out there by Dexter, and it looks like they're going to start heading towards Mazarin. The ultimate is canceled. That bottom lane, again, condemned against the wall. Taz is just pinning people up in this lane. There is still a lot of dancing going around. We saw the repeated blue buff Ooh, in Blade. Oh, Missile just barely close. grazing the back there, Mithy. Could not finish him off. But that the delayed blue buff and steal from Lemon Dogs did come through. Uh, but that still has to be transitioned into an advantage. It stops Mazarin from getting a blue buff, yeah. which should give Nuke Duck a little bit of an edge here coming up in the mid lane. But the lead has not actually shown itself yet, knowing the game is still only a couple of hundred gold You're right. Lemon Dogs. They're doing the things that affects them. They've stolen Alunir's first blue, the second blue for Mazarin, who had a tough time in the top lane. So they're working on it, but the objective's not there to be grabbed yet. They may try after this one. Can't do it as a dragon, but Inspiro gonna take some good damage here. Third bolt is gonna be shielded off a bit by the damage. And Don't here from the top far, lane, Alanir looking like he could go in. Two shots, the barrier's off. Alanir from the side, low on mana, makes it count with just the cataclysm. He walks it in for the sure, for sure secured kill. We'll call that uh, Tabs being a bit of a greed boy right there <laughs> because he had no reason to go in for that kill. He went completely past his safety net. They had no pink ward control in the tri brush where Alunir came through and he paid for it. That's his second death of the game, and both of his deaths have actually came from him overcommitting. And Zoro Zero is just having hit a time of his life in this top lane, really not finding anything that's going to push him out, 83 to 70. So good CS kept up by NBS and what happened with the lane swaps earlier and the chaos we've been seeing. 12 minutes in, 2-2 two to two on the kills, and the gold, like we've been saying, is pretty much even. There's a lot happening, but the objectives are not falling after those 
happenings no. happen. Both these teams are playing pretty slow, and this is actually, I think, one of the reasons they've been outpaced so far at the World Championship is because neither Lemon Dogs or Gaming Gear really press the issue on their opponents. Right. And we're seeing a very similar play style right here. NBS, though, trying to go in on 0-0. This is going to be an exciting matchup. He's big. There's a, quite a minion wave he's got to fight in as well. We got the TP from Nuke Duck in. The flash from NBS. He says, I can riff too. Gets himself a safety. Dippity doo da day. He just gets out of there. Nuke Duck burns another teleport. And he kind of needs to make an impact at this point in the game. Yesterday, when we saw X Peke's Cassidin, Peke stood even in the game until about this point where he had the tier of the goddess and the catalyst to the protector. And then I think he picked up about six kills within a three minute span because Fnatic was just crazy and all over the map like that. Knowing Nuke Duck's teleport is down, I wonder really how crazy he can get here. And it looks like Lemon Dogs will start to crack this one open in the top lane if they can get that turret. But the bottom lane is being pressured out and they're more than happy to have that happen. But they're not going to be able to save that turret. Looks like Gaming Gear is going to answer back. Even push across the board and it evens out the gold yet again. I really got to hand it to Gaming Gear here. Keeping the gold even against Lemon Dogs, who were looked at as potentially the best team in Europe coming in, knowing that Lemon Dogs was the number two seed in the European LCS and also had the best record in the regular season, means a lot. This dragon fight coming up, though, could definitely swing the game in either direction. This is very big, and it's what needed to happen. Gaming Gear trying to get ahead in this one. Dexter is full force on the Deadly Brother. They've actually gone split side onto him now, and they're forced to watch him go down. Lemon Dogs from the top. Rotation to Dragon. Now get that covered. Lemon Dogs just simply outnumbered Gaming Gear right there. With NBS top lane, Gaming Gear was positioned around the Dragon, hoping that they would be able to sneak it before Lemon Dogs would come in. That's what that pink ward is on top of Dragon 4. They were hoping that Lemon Dogs would not come and fight them because if they did, it would be a 5v4. And you don't necessarily run from Vi and Cassidy when they're chasing you down. That really punishes Gaming Gear. At least though, NBS was left alone in the top lane and got the majority of that turret. That one is surely prepped for him to be taking it down to open up the map a little bit more here for Gaming Gear. It's something that they need. It's gonna be mid turret focus after that, which will be good. They can start to squeeze up these lanes because their team fight is actually pretty, pretty good mm -hmm. for them to come in. They have that pick off assassination but they also have to be careful because they're chasing that team of disengage, yeah. shields, and you can really get tunneled into chasing a team like that. Yeah, the team fight phase in this game is actually going to revolve heavily around, um, it seems silly to say, but who's ahead beforehand, only because Gaming Gear has only a Lunar as their main tank, yeah. and then the rest of it is about flank. When Once again, we saw Fnatic play double assassin yesterday. I'm going to keep referencing this because it's our best point of reference. Soaz was able to sneak around the back of the fight, because the rest of the team was strong enough to hold them off. But if Gaming Gear falls behind or Lunar becomes too weak to actually be that tank, NBS will never have the ability or time to go around the sides of fights because Lemon Dogs will just run straight into Gaming Gear and through them. And if Lemon Dogs right. can effectively catch Gaming Gear's assassins together, the fights will be over effectively before they start. I guess it, it's, it's what makes it such a composition that needs to be ahead early. Because if you can't do what you need to and they don't respect your damage of all of those high impact lanes, they're just going to run into you like they say. Dexter trying to put a little bit of fear into his enemy. Looks like he's just going to stand on the outside here. Thinks he may be able to get some damage onto Inspiro, but the team too closely huddled together will be able to stay safe. Nuke Duck in the bottom lane. We'll see. We'll check out some stock on the CS. 107 to 111. Ari versus Cassidy. Is Nuke Duck a little bit behind on that, but he has finished the rod over in Athens. Yeah, I mean, if you come into a game and you're in a Cassidy versus Ari matchup and you tell the guy at 16 minutes you are going to not be dead and you're going to be eight minion farm behind Ari, you take it immediately. Yeah. Because that is actually a good start for Kasten in the overall context of the game. Nuke Duck will look to be stronger later on here. Um, the Rod of Ages completion by Nuke Duck is extremely normal for a Kasten build. We have seen times, oh, this is actually Zoro Zero getting ganked. There is Zoro goes in, the death mark goes down. Can they finish up a little bit of damage on top of that? They do have the red buff. He's able to flash out of that one. The slow has worn off of him. They don't get the extra one there. It looks like he's going to be able to get himself out of this one quite clean. I don't know if they fight. The turret's quite low. They yeah. could have gone for that. That gank at least is going to allow them to secure the turret because right. Zero Zero is not going to stick around That's for true. another spell rotation from Gaming Gear uh, at that turret. 
and call me a liar, but he's actually sticking around here. This is trouble. He's, yeah, he's, he's out. He's not safe. Getting that HP back from the Vorpal Blades, but he does stay safe in that one. So the turret goes down. They pretty much keep him in lane, too, but he's going to be able to soak up that experience. So they really don't hurt him too much. Three to two on the kills. Nuke Duck looking to take away some of the jungle camps here as we may see our first real engagement, or at least Lemon Dogs trying to pressure that mid lane. Maybe not. It might be the next. <laughs> the thing is, these are two teams that throughout the World Championships have not taken initiative, and that's why we're seeing them have this farm out against each other right now. They're really just waiting until they're comfortable or they're hoping to play a reactive right. game instead of a proactive game. There's been a few proactive moves that Lemon Dogs has tried to pull off with Nuke Duck teleporting in or with Zoro Zero Shen thing on top of Vi. But even all of those have only re resulted in very minimal overall gains. I also look at the build path of Zoro Zero in the top lane here and the Sunfire Cape being completed was actually extremely key in him staying alive against a Lunar and NBS. Mm -hmm. Because initially, we were thinking he was going to rush the Spirit Visage, but because Mazarin has completely abandoned that lane, he very quickly and nimbly changed paths to Sunfire Cape. And because he's been able to get the Sunfire Cape, he also provides us a, a consistent split put push threat right now, which is actually one of the big reasons Lemon Dogs has pulled a thousand years ahead. Nuke Duck still happy to sit in the bottom lane. We do have to remember. Lemon Dogs across the map is still a very scary thing. There's Stand United and Teleport. Gaming gear across the map is them slowing the game down, really trying to farm this one up because they're not going to be able to get to that fight as fast as Lemon Dogs. So anytime we see Gaming Gear kind of pushing out here, like you said, it's reactive. They're trying to adapt to what Lemon Dogs is doing. We kind of saw that with the Dragon. You know, Lemon Dogs went top, so Gaming Gear said, yeah, we got turret and Dragon. Yeah. But Lemon Dogs reacted faster. I'm actually very curious to see how the rest of this game plays out because I actually haven't seen Gaming Gear play this well uh, all throughout the World Championship. Even though they're not making big big plays necessarily, their, their counter moves, like yep. when Lemon Dogs does take the Dragon and kind of catch Gaming Gear off guard, are actually making them some progress. MBS stayed top lane, got the turret. Their mid laner Mazarin has played well to avoid Vi Kassadin ganks, which are probably close to the deadliest ganks in the game. Maybe Vi Zed is a little bit more deadly, as Lemon Dogs knows very well when TSM played it against them. It's still the closest I've seen Gaming Gear be here at 20 minutes, and now they might actually be looking to make a big play with four people stacked in the mid lane. Gaming Gear feeling that eyes on the map makes them safe here. We may see the third turret go down for Lemon Dogs. Dexter comes in and right onto MBS. Zed goes in on the midi though. The support disengaged, who was in the back of the line, getting hit up quite hard there. Right back into the fight, and it's gonna be Tabs taken down NBS. And it seemed a little crazy of Dexter to go in there, but the big execution moment there for Lemon Dogs is Mithy landed an exhaust onto NBS right before he tried to use Death Mark. So Zed did almost no damage, and now this could be Dragon number two for Lemon Dogs. A Lunar is in the mid lane, unable to steal. Ooh, Spyro a little too close for comfort there. Zoro Zero just on the other side. That is going to be a very dead Lulu. Zoro picking himself up a second kill of the game. And that's actually fairly typical Lemon Dogs play here. We're 20 minutes into the game, and their laning has transitioned them into their first core set of items. Of course, Sunfire Cape, Rod of Ages, and Blade of the Ruined King if we go top, mid, 80 carry. Then they're able to get the quick little fight win and immediately transition into an objective or two. 4,000 gold lead is a big jump ahead in this game that was very close a couple of minutes ago. Lots of pings going down here. Gaming Gear playing us a song on the minimap. Will they be able to activate anything out of this though? Tabs is gonna hook himself up here. May get caught by a charm. No, he keeps safe hip to hip with Mithy. Cast is teleporting in. Passing there he right is. below it, blue buff. They don't know that he came in. They do not have wards on that. They're going to be walking right into him. Mazarin gets the silence on. Deadly, Bro Deadly Brother trying to put on the Gatling, and it's going to be all about Alunir with the Cataclysm. Will they be able to turn this around? Mithy falls as Mazarin finds himself a kill. Deadly Brother is the focus, though, and they got perfect lockdown on him. Dexter's over the wall, and they have a 2v2 now on the side of the river. Alunir looks like he's going down as MBS gets 1v1 by Bane. They continue to go on to the fight as Alunir chased by Dexter. They split off once more, knowing it's the safest bat, but both of them look to go down. This fight, Riv, is chaos. Everyone is so low on mana and resources right now. A Lunar is going to try to execute himself, but I don't think it's been long enough. No. Oh. Doesn't matter. Zero, zero. That's close. Flies in. It actually was kind of close. Very extended 
fight that we saw in that one. It shows kind of the closeness of the game and where mm -hmm. the players are. People now going back to buy are going to have the items that would have zeroed each other out, but there was a lot of, you know, only 25% damage here and there from full spell reels. Yeah. It's going to be different. Now. It also turned into an extremely scattered fight yeah. only because the amount of assassins we have in this game. NBS and Mazarin are never going to have a traditional team fight in the sense of clean engaging and comboing together. Uh, especially when they're on the defensive, because everyone on Gaming Gear could just split up into many different ways of running away. And then likewise, Lemon Dogs expended all of their mana chasing them down. Nuke Duck and Dexter were both completely spent by the end of that. And it was actually very surprising to me when Zoro Zero still had his flash up at the end of that fight to secure the kill when a Lunar tried to execute himself on that air turret. Bit of a swing there and kills. Eight to three now coming up for Lemon Dogs. They have a for sure hold on these team fights as they come in. Looking at a few core items now as that Archangels is finished up with a Rod of Ages now for Nuke Duck. The Triforce coming out onto Zoro Zero instead of a build for the Blade of the Rune King that we've seen some Shen's building now, that Triforce. It's been, it's been good in 311 for a lot of people. I think we're gonna see more Triforce Shen uh, instead of Blade of the Rune King if the option happens. Mm -hmm. And Shen's will generally build that offensive item if they're going really far ahead in a game. And since Zoro Zero is 304, Ooh. Right after that first blood on Mazarin, he's really just taking it from that point on. He's going to continue to oh build dear. offensive and be a very large threat. That turret's not going to help you, Mazarin. Don't cast your spells! You're just going to give him Force Pulse! It's more damage, Mazarin! Get out of there! Oh, he gets the Salt Battery! All the way locked down! Can he break the vault? No, Mazarin gets the Lulu Ultimate! Wild Growth comes on! Dexter back into the fight, but here comes Lemon Dogs! They've been called in and the cavalry arrives! Tabs onto the Lelanir! The Tabs Rockets going out and he gets the proc of the Silver Bowl! 10 to 3 on the kills, a 6,000 gold lead, and Zoro's in the top lane without any pressure. Yeah, we gotta remember that was a 4v5. Mazarin was caught out of position at the start, and it meant the rest of Gaming Gear was trying to collapse in a round. But like we said, if Lemon Dogs got ahead, the team fights would not be clean for Gaming Gear. Lemon Dogs could just go through everywhere they want. NBS was unprotected, the flank did not work, he got focused down, and then the rest of Lemon Dogs could just push through for more. Lemon Dogs looking to really pad their pockets on this one. Getting a bit of gold out of this globally for themselves. They pick up the fifth turret now of Gaming Gear side. If Tabs looks like he does, no, he's gonna back off on this one. Deadly Brother can still put out some damage with that Triforce and it will be respected for now. We get LD to back and we'll see what they put in their inventories as they go for what could be final push here as they have a quite a strong lead that swayed towards that 20 minute mark. And how long until Nuke Duck buys boots? Right now, actually. Damn. Ah, he close. didn't have boots 24 minutes into the game. He heard you. He had rushed Rod of Ages and Archangel Staff. And I was curious, since Cassidy can hop around so much, and Nuke Duck was actually moving around fairly well, if he'd go for the magic penetration. But he decides to be boring. He picks him up real quickly. And now he's back in the base. The boots helping him get there to save the turret. Oh, right back on a deadly brother. Locked out there. The barrier very early. But here comes Zoro Zero as well. Everybody getting a piece of that one. And Lemon Dog's working very well together. Yeah, this is once the Cassidy gets going. Yep. Seven minutes ago, Nuke Duck didn't have many kills. He was 001 sitting on a tier in a rod of ages. That's the point you don't actually want Cassidy to get to if you haven't pushed him behind at that point in the game yet. It's allowing him to jump around the map, control, and assassinate Gaming Gear. And it was, you know, from the get go, like we said, that first chess, poof, uh, chess piece moved into place by Dexter, always pressuring the blues here, allows them to continuously pressure, you know? They weren't, Elunir wasn't able to come back onto Kassin, and as you would want your jungler to help mid lane. Mm -hmm. And the swap in the lane's early game, I think, hurt Gaming Gear a little bit. Yeah, I actually think very early on, Zoro Zero being able to kill Mazarin and right. the subsequent lane swapping that that created uh, definitely hurt Gaming Gear a little bit, but honestly, Gaming Gear stuck around in this game for quite a long time, and it's actually the mid-game execution here that is mostly to credit Lemon Dogs with their victory. The way that they countered Gaming Gear's pushes in the mid lane, Dexter initiating uh, time and time again, when Gaming Gear was not able to set up any flank maneuvers with their double assassins, it really swung at this point. And now, even if Gaming Gear did pull off a successful flank, it still might not be successful just because of the farm advantage the rest of Lemon Dogs is accumulating. Right, at this point, you can consider the game and almost, you know, time and minutes. It's going to be a few fights. The next 10, 15 minutes have to go by. And that's really hard to do. It's hard to keep your team in that mentality. Keep reminding everybody this is what we need to do. Because when the fight, you know, 
presents itself, it's kind of what you want to do all the time, mm -hmm. and you fall right into it. And one thing that is actually extremely in Lemon Dog's favor this game, outside of the 10,000 gold, is the experience. We've mentioned a couple times in the past that gold in stats per level is between four and 700 gold, depending on what character mm -hmm. you're playing. Um, Nuke Duck escapes out here as on, on a level 17 Cassidy. His mid lane matchup, Mazarin, is level 15 on Ari right now. That could be a thousand gold right there. You look up and down yeah. the board, almost everyone on gaming gear, 0 0 versus MBS or Dexter versus Lunar, are two levels ahead. That's nearly 1,500 gold, or sorry, about 1,200 gold per person on top of the gold lead that we already have built on Lemon Dogs. It's one of the reasons gaming gear is so hopeless and helpless right now unless they can catch up in the experience as well as the gold. And it's big, Jack. A lot of those two-level leads are that level 16, that final click you need of the ulti. Looks like they go to engage but back off. They know when they're a little too in over their head. Yeah, and all that we just talked about doesn't even take into account uh, the damage you get from skilling up your action. Yes. Yeah. It's tough times right here. I'm seeing right there MBS oh. was unable oh. to do a 0 Surprise! Stop, drop, and roll. Didn't do it. Didn't. He tried to. Well, if you run fast enough, you can kind of put yourself out, but it doesn't work all the time. Have you tried that before? No. Thank I've, ne I've never God been on I fire haven't. trying to run away. Personally. Nope. Don't try it at home either. 9,000 in the lead. Actually, 11, because I can count. We have about 10,500 gold there. 12 to 3 on the scoreboard as we come up to about 30 minutes on this one. It's been Lemon Dogs in full control after about that 15 minute mark. Mm -hmm. Gaming Gear was able to hold themselves in. Great play by Nuke Duck on Cassidy in the middle. The roam they got out of that teleport really swayed a lot of fights. And now the dance for this does not leave Gaming Gear in any position to really contest. Yeah, this is a very solo dance right here for Lemon Dogs. They're practicing their moves right now. Being able to get the Baron buff down. Nuke Duck was not even there. He had his teleport in case anyone came to contest. But Lemon Dogs actually had fairly minimal ward control inside the Gaming Gear jungler just to check if Gaming Gear was coming in. And Inspiro. That's a bad place to be clearing wards. He throws down the growth. He knows what the plant lady's all about. Tries to get himself out. Oh, against the wall. He gets condemned. Trying to get out of this one, but I don't think it's going to work. The plant actually got the last hit on that one. Yep. And this means the rest of Lemon Dogs is going to be looking, I think, to end this game very quickly. Ooh. Nuke Duck pops his shield and gets oh another one. <laughs> Sarah's embrace into stand united. 100 to 0 in just under 2.5 seconds. Mazarin looking to go down here. 15 to 2 level 18s that want to party with him. And the rest of Lemon Dogs flashing into the base. There it is, going in on to Corky. They easily take him down. Tabs just throwing out the silver bolts. Alan here trying to do what he can, gets the Cataclysm on to cheekily get himself back into base and into safety. But the inhibitors taking quite a bit of damage right now for Gaming Gear. Yeah, and seemingly Lemon Dogs flipped a switch at this point. They were up substantially and now it looks more than insurmountable one inhibitor second on the way still three people dead for gaming gear and a baron on all five people i feel like nuke duck got that arc angels and his boots finally late in the game and told, told the team felt a lot safer felt a lot stronger in their initiations just came full force one after the other right now still not really respecting what gg has in the base since they're all down and respawning but they try to get some more damage on these turrets and Nuke Duck is having a very good game on Cassidy. Right Absolutely. Now. He's had a very rough world championships. And it, it should not reflect badly on him as a player, just knowing the mids he has to be against. We said this was this a mid oriented tournament. Yeah, Cool from OMG, as well as Faker, potentially yep. the most hyped up and skilled mid in the world. He's very much living up to a lot of the hype we mm -hmm. had given for Faker coming into this. And Nuke Duck actually played pretty well in the majority of those games. And Nuke Duck has relied on heavily to carry for Lemon Dogs, and just because Lemon Dogs as a team was not able to do that doesn't mean Nuke Duck should be getting hatred for it. This is a, a, an example of a very good game for Nuke Duck. One of the things he does so well is when he's on Assassins, he's able to still out-farm everyone else, and he's done just that on Cassidy. It kind of makes those matchups work. Yep. You don't know how. NBS taking some damage. The charm goes in, but there it is. We were talking about it. And Champion Select, the dive buddies, and they go right into the deep end on that one. They have to reconsider for just a quick second, though. And Lemon Dogs is just kind of going in, maybe a little bit out there, not able to dive all the way because Gaming Gear is just playing so oh, passively right there's now. There's the end taunt, the dive buddy esque composition once again. Nuke Duck all the way deep here, throws it down. He's going to rift walk out of this one. 
Get that regen from the Baron buff, and he should uh -oh. outlive this. Dexter comes in to be the meat shield. Tab throwing himself in the fire as well. Zora almost getting hit up by the fountain. It looks like they got the Nexus in their eyes. Looks like they got the victory as well to go under the belt. Nuke Duck using all of his active spells right there, including the teleport. Nexus going down. Looks like Lemon Dogs picks up a clean and decisive victory. Very well played there. Very slow in the early game. You can see that both teams giving each other the respect that was required. And once they found that item threshold, the 15 minutes, they got the Triforce on Shen. They got a lot of things in their pocket. They knew they were in that. They're in the lead. And it's yeah. not something we see very often, but they took control. Shen actually ended up building a Blade of the Ruined King. Finally. And a Triforce <laughs> on Shen because he felt happy for the damage. But smiles all around for gaming Absolutely. here as well. They know the situation they're in. They're still trying to get wins. And despite the ending of that game, Gaming Gear did stick around fairly well. The playstyle matchup between Lemon Dogs was very similar between these two teams. And it turned out in the end, Lemon Dogs just played the mid game better. They executed a couple fights better and took their lead from there. Being so assassin based on yep. both sides means the game is going to swing like that. And it was fun to watch too because, like we said, both teams got pretty high priority picks I like the going level into one, that one. Where the four of them just <laughs> kind of stared at each other. Five for minute a while. blue buff. Yeah. We're going in and out. Absolutely amazing game. We still have one more to go on the day. It's mm -hmm. OMG versus SKT. So, pretty sure everybody's hyped for that one. TSM versus OMG. Or TSM, thank you. going to be the OMG. big one. Because, wow. I mean, my brain is in it. Mathematically, TSM, TSM is still right. alive, so stick around for that one. Absolutely. So we're going to send it over to Quickshot and his posse at the analyst desk for a breakdown of the Lemon Dogs' is win. Thank you very much, Riff. We'll be thinking about robbing some trains a little bit later. <laughs> <laughs> Sheriff uh, Quickshot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about this matchup. Uh, the first thing that I really want to touch on is the, the, the level 2 1v1, where Zara Zero playing Shen was able to take out Mazarin's Ari. It was something that I did not expect coming, coming, and I know it was a bit unique. Nobody expects the <laughs> Doran Shield Shen level 2 kill. That's why it worked. <laughs> hey, I wish we got to see more of it, but I think that was just Zoro Zero using creep waves there's, to his advantage. There's been a lot of kills on, on that top lane early today. Like a lot of, a lot of stuff. Sure. A lot of people hiding, doing unexpected stuff, so maybe... I wonder what Fnag is going to do with that. Maybe just put five people in that brush. Why not? Yeah, who, who knows? You know, it's not like they would do that. You know, they Ever. haven't done that before. Um, the one other thing that I, I want to talk on is uh, we've seen Tab sitting in the mid lane for a little while. And in the first 10 to 15 minutes, his greed may be costing a little. There was a couple of fights that broke out and Tab's kept chasing mm -hmm. when maybe he should have backed off. It gave away a couple of kills and, and kept... Uh, gaming gear pretty even with him in the early stages of the game. Yeah, he definitely did get a little bit ahead of himself. He wanted to get those early kills on Vayne to start snowballing, get his uh, blade really early, but it did cost his team early, so they had to wait a bit longer. That being said, I did like the composition of the Shen plus Vi and combined with two sort of mobile assassins. When Vi goes in with Shen, she splits apart the other team, and that opens them up for Vayne to be able to chase people down later. Kassin does pretty similar things, so it did work out really well for them in the end. And Shen Vi is something I see a lot in champions, actually, because the combination just makes it so Vi, was, Vi is 100% going to get on a target, and then when Shen ulties onto them, it's a guaranteed like taunt and two people on a squishy champion. Yeah, people talk about the ball delivery systems with Orianna, but a ninja delivery system is even more <laughs> deadly. Yep. We always call that a piggyback ride Shen. When it, whenever it was <laughs> Shen Nocturne back in the days, it was the same, like, Nocturne ulties get a Shen instantly, Lance, instant taunt. Uh -huh. Requires a lot of synergy, but I really like the composition. I don't... I think the, both teams had a really nice composition, though. Jarvan with uh, Zed and Ari together works mm -hmm. really well as well. Although, it, just, it was up to Lemon Dogs to stay even early and then just scale better in, into the late game. Cassidy becomes such a threat, backs up, back up from Shen. A lot of card control coming out from Shen and Vi. And then you have Vayne just outscaling Corky. You could really notice that in the fights. They would fight in the beginning, fight would disrupt, and then Vayne would clean house. Well, and you know, once Shen gets tanky enough too, if you can't kill him in a, a rotation from an assassin, you're you're in pretty big trouble right there. Yep. So. so one of the things I want to touch on uh, before we move on to our next game was that both of these teams, for lack of a better word, lacked a little bit of initiative in this game. We've been seeing that, you know, for many other teams that have beaten Gaming Gear, they have uh, tended to get ahead early and, and through making plays. Lemon Dogs, they were a slower team in the EU LCS. I mean, they had the ability to play early, but we did see them playing patiently and controlled and whatnot, and we've seen it again here. It could be uh, part of the reason they didn't do quite so well against some of the other teams, but what was your take on, on the slower pace of the game, especially with some focus on the Lemdog side? Well, I think that's the big difference between like a really great team and just like a good team. 
obviously every team here is world class. That's why they made it here. But like a team like SK Telecom, they don't have hesitation. Like I said before, they if they see a play that they can make, they're they're just gonna do it immediately without even thinking about it. And I feel like. A, a team that's willing to make those plays gets in that like the minds of their opponents, and not only that, you can snowball advantages so much quicker and end the game so much faster. Could be a bit of a mindset issue as well. If you're coming in into the group as one of not favors, but say dark horses like Lemon Dogs did, comparing to uh, gaming here who had nothing to lose and only something to win, you you can get a little scared. If you have like a negative winning record already, you probably just want to you want that one win to at least go home with a with a with a a little bit respect for yourself, and and that's why maybe they would slow down the progress and know that they can take it late game 100%, and yeah, that makes the victory be a little less convincing, but a lot more secure. I think that really comes back full circle to the Tab's early plays, too. He got slapped down when he went for the early aggression. That will tame your pretty much your whole team for the early game, and they'll play a bit slower after that. Well, we'll have to see how that loss is going to affect the standings after our fourth match of the day. As we've highlighted already, OMG and SKT still sitting at the top of the table. TSM, Lemon Dogs in third and fourth with Gaming Gear at zero and six. And as, well, as we have already highlighted, TSM still have a chance, but we'll have to see how they do against OMG as their first step along the way. And so far today, all four of you have gone a perfect four for four in predicting the winners. Let's see if any of you can go a perfect five out of five and correctly pick the winner of our last match. It is going to be OMG versus Team Solar Med. And before I get your opinion, keep in mind TSM's performance against SKT1 because it was definitely a step up from uh, what many people were expecting. So, Kobe, who's going to win this game? It was a step up, but I'm still going to have to choose OMG here. Still going against TSM. It does break my heart, but I think that OMG just... Their play is so crisp, I don't think they're going to have the openings uh, that TSM are looking for, even in the early game, to get ahead. And without the early game, TSM not going to be able to finish it. I'm also uh, going with OMG. And it, it, like you can't deny that TSM played really, really well against SK Telecom. I just feel like OMG is really overwhelming right now. I mean, there's a reason why they're undefeated in the group. Uh, I agree. OMG here as well. Although I do hope that uh, they get some apple pie back in the <laughs> oven and hopefully TSM can get it. Although I think the conceptual, the strength of TSM was their conceptual play and that was lacking in SKTT1 and that's why TSM ha had a seemingly a possibility to beat them but OMG has not dropped the, the conceptual ball, so to say. <laughs> so they've been playing really well, really solid. They understand the dives a lot better. Um, Oh, I, yeah. yeah. They I understand dives, that's for sure. That's Apple for Pie sure. is dead, dude. <laughs> Apple Pie believe. is dead. What about Cloud9, Double Lift? Well, that's like a different pie altogether. <laughs> <laughs> that, that oven is still peeling. That, that one's still cooking. Pie? It'll be done yeah. in a couple Blueberry of days. Blueberry Pie, I, I think. Monty, what's your prediction <laughs> for the game? I got to go with these gents, OMG as well. They have looked the, the most crisp, the most complete team so far in the group stages in either group that we've seen so far in my mind. And they look extremely comfortable. No jitters. I think that uh, they're, uh, they're the team to beat right now. So we're all in agreement at the desk that OMG is the favorite for this matchup. Uh, before we talk a little bit more about the specifics of the game, I've got a question for Krepo that I want to throw quite directly at you. We've been highlighting the idea of conceptual play. And I would like it if you could expand on that. You know, some of the basics. What is it that TSM is doing well in their conceptual play? And also, for some of the viewers who may be not 100% familiar with the terminology or, or what exactly it means. You know, just break it down a little bit for the guys so, so they can also think about the games that they're playing in this light. So in League of Legends, you need two things. You need, you need to plan out your plays and then you need to execute them. A lot of these top world teams have really, really good mechanics. That's what's keeping back a lot of the newer players. They, they have, may, might have a good ID, but they may not be able to execute it. The difference between good players and the best players on top level when everybody has really solid mechanics gets made on, on conceptual play. What are you going to do? You need to plan out your moves. You cannot play reactively. If, if something happens, you, oh sure, you will react to it, but you need to have a plan. TSM is really good on that and in using, say, how the team comp works together. They send Dyrus top with Cardus, they would use the Requiem with their kill bot lane, which then they could transition into a Drake, which they do really well. They, every game they play, they almost get a Drake around eight minutes. Yeah, and having, um, one thing I want to add is that uh, like having a strategy in your head, uh, anticipation will increase your reaction time by like tenfold. And the reason that the top level players like, for example, Faker, have really strong mechanics is because they've seen these situations, they know what's going to happen. It's not like Faker has just insanely higher reaction time than his opponents. He knows what's going to happen before it happens. That's why he reacts and has no hesitation. Game reads, yeah. And, you know, I can talk about this too with Peter about how we, we operate on CLG and... 
uh, when we come into a game, I really encourage the players to take time to break down what the enemy composition is good at, what their composition is good at, where they think those flaws are. And if we look at the last game as well, we had that Jax that once he got big enough, there was no answer to that split push. And I think that's what really pushed SK Telecom over the top there and uh, kind of basically was the last nail in the coffin. But if you go into a game talking about trying to form plans already, then you have a much stronger ability to make active strategic decisions as opposed to becoming a victim of your opponent's strategy. That's actually really something interesting how League of Legends has changed throughout the past year. If you go back uh, to the last World Finals, that's about one month before that, World Elite was introducing a 2v1 top lane, which was unheard of. Basically, changed the entire metagame around, and even right now, we're still seeing some issues on some teams with that 2v1 uh, lane because it evolved into a 3v1 dive or whether the jungle goes to hold it, mirrors it or not. And it's, there's so much depth that's coming to League of Legends because Season 2 was all about team fights. That's, that's where we, mm -hmm. we were really good at. Like we, it, it took us a really long time to realize, hey, this game is no longer all about team fights. Yes, sure, we could beat some teams in a straight-up team fight, but they just won't do it. They will do such things as split push. The other thing now is that the strategies that teams are coming out with now take 15 minutes, 20 minutes even, to set up. Before, North American teams especially, I know, would just prep a level one, we'd prep a team comp, we're going to go in. That's, like, that's our plan, that's our prep for a match. Now, you have to say, what are we doing at 10 minutes? What are we doing at 20 minutes? What are we doing at the second dragon, the third blue spawn? There's so much planning that goes into these games now. And you can tell different regions have different kind of conceptual ideas about how you're supposed to play the game. You see Koreans, generally, not all of them, but generally when they're ahead, they want to control a side of the jungle, and they're looking to get picks into it because they're forcing the enemy team into saying, like, oh my god, they could be on Baron, we need to face check. And that's what always happens. And if you look at Chinese, uh, the way they handle the game, generally they're just going to dive you. They don't care if there's a tower there at all. If they're ahead, they will tower dive you. Well, we've got just enough time for Martin Kreber to give you final thoughts before we move on. Anything to add? Oh, well, just talking about the development, it's really brought out a certain flavor of teams, a certain style, and like the, the development of the game has made each team kind of have their own strengths and weaknesses to a much greater degree. We're talking about TSM. They're the team of the eight-minute dragon, always, 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 and they're very good about how they take it. They have plans, and that's, that's become one of their hallmarks, right? And that's what's so fun to see these teams, for me at least, to see these teams going up against each other because you can really get into it when you talk about the different styles. Waiting for that Meteos jungle, huh? I, I know that's I a know. big controversy. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. Crepo, closing thoughts? I just wanted to point out, like, as Kobe said, level ones. If you would go back more than a year, year and a half ago, people would just stand and get ready to lane. Yeah. So <laughs> the game is constantly evolving. And I don't even know, like, now we, every time you think, yeah, we've seen it all. There's nothing they can, no more curveballs. I've never thought we've seen it all, Crepo. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe that's why I'm not at both finals. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Much. That, this was an awesome discussion. It's something that I think many people will be thinking about in the time to come. And we're going to take a very quick break, guys. But when we come back, the undefeated OMG and Cool look to crush Team Solo's mid's quarterfinal dreams. So stay where you are. We'll be right back with more from the World Championships in Los Angeles, California. <laughs>